Hello again. I'm not, as regular viewers will know, a cynical man by any means, but I can't help but imagine the executives of some international pharmaceutical company relaxing on the golf course and bemoaning the fact that they have vast stockpiles of smallpox vaccines which nobody wants anymore because the disease has been eradicated, unfortunately. There are billions of doses just sitting in warehouses until they are finally dumped and destroyed as a tax loss. Even charities working in the third world don't want them because nobody gets smallpox anymore. Then one imagines one of these ruthless and unscrupulous men saying to the other something along the lines of, if only there were another virulent disease which we could use it to protect against. Yes, the other man said, there was a fortune which has been made from the antiretrovirals used to treat AIDS. Just suppose they think that a sexually transmitted disease like AIDS, which spread like wildfire through gay communities, arose, and the only protection against it was those old stocks of smallpox vaccines which are gathering dust in the storeroom. Lo and behold, enter stage left, the monkeypox virus, which only really afflicts gay men and can be prevented by being inoculated against smallpox. Of course, this is a fantasy, but it's curious to see loads of smallpox vaccines being sold suddenly. Just like AIDS, by the way, we were all solemnly assured when this epidemic began that this was not a sexually transmitted disease and that anybody could catch it. Remember when we were told AIDS don't die of ignorance? Of course, monkeypox is, at least in this country, a sexually transmitted disease, and we all know that without the shadow of a doubt, because of the more than 2,000 cases so far confirmed in Britain, just 14 have been women. That's 7 per thousand, or 0.7%. In other words, 99.3% of monkeypox cases here have been among men. I will not distress or disgust viewers by describing the practices which have led to the spreading of the disease among men. This is, after all, a respectable channel, suitable for the whole family. The World Health Organization has now declared monkeypox to be a global health emergency. It's right up there with coronavirus and polio. This means that there will be a drive to vaccinate people against it. It's a bit tricky, though, because, of course, you cannot just vaccinate homosexuals, not if you wish to maintain the fiction that anybody at all can catch monkeypox. The Director General of the World Health Organization, who is a foreigner with an unpronounceable name, says this is an outbreak which can be stopped with the right strategies in the right groups. Cases are currently concentrated among men who had sex with men, especially those with multiple sexual partners, and countries need to adopt measures that protected their health, human rights and dignity. Then he came out with this gem. Stigma and discrimination can be as dangerous as any virus. More research needed on this claim. Viruses can paralyse and blind us. They can cause brain damage and kill us. Can stigma have the same effect? I'm not convinced. I would be interested to know how monkeypox actually became a global health emergency in such a short length of time. There have been previous small-scale outbreaks, nearly all of which have just involved people that have caught the thing in Nigeria or Ghana. For example, there were four cases in this country in 2018, all connected with a couple of Nigerians, but it didn't spread. Last year, there were three cases in Wales, again connected with Nigeria. Then in May this year, just a couple of months ago, an epidemic appeared from nowhere, spreading not only in this country, but across the whole world. This has never happened from monkeypox, and none of the experts appear to know just why it happened. It blew up from nowhere in much the same way as COVID exploded onto the world stage. You can always rely upon the BBC to say something idiotic about viruses, and the present outbreak of monkeypox is no exception. 
In the description to this video, I give a link to the BBC report on the World Health Organization's actions relating to the disease. After mentioning that it is mainly spreading so far among male homosexuals, the reporter who writes an analysis at the end says the following. But remember, there are still countries where same-sex relationships are illegal and stigma and persecution can act as a barrier to health. In fact, of course, if it is spread by men having sex with other men, then stigma and persecution will tend to discourage or indeed prevent such behaviour. Rather than acting as a barrier to health, in this case, stigma and persecution are likely to slow the spread of the disease and stop it becoming an epidemic. It is fairly plain that it's taken a hold and is spreading like crazy in the very countries which tolerate or celebrate homosexuality. Uh, in the one places where um, gay sex is frowned upon, it doesn't seem to be turning into quite such a thing as it does in places like London and San Francisco. I'm not at all sure how this business will play out in the future, but I think it has the potential to be the next major emergency to take our mind off other matters.